Dr. Anastasia Thompson, and today I'm going to do my best to walk you through a video demonstration of how to perform a subcutaneous hormone injection. This technique is applicable either to estradiol valerate or to testosterone supionate, so I hope that you'll find it useful. In case you don't know, a subcutaneous injection is one that goes into the thin layer of fatty tissue underneath the skin, as opposed to an intramuscular injection. I prefer to teach the subcutaneous injection technique because it is much less invasive and much less painful with a much shorter recovery time. So I hope that you'll find these instructions useful and easy enough to follow. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna to wanna to do is just to disinfect my hands. I actually prefer to just give them a thorough wash before I prepare my injection, but in the absence of being able to do that, hand sanitizer is not about that. And then I'm gonna get all of the supplies together that I need in order to do my injection. So that's my vial of medication. As we've said already, this could be estradiol valerate or it could be uh, testosterone supionate. My one mole syringe, and I use a BD Lua Lock syringe, so it has a screw type adapter on the front. My alcohol pads, a large needle to draw up the medication, and a small needle to inject with, as well as a cotton wool ball. So just to make sure that you can see all of this, um, my syringe, my 21 gauge needle for drawing up the medication, this is the one with the, the green uh, plastic hub, and then my 30 gauge needle for doing the injection. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to clean the top of my medication vial, and I'll do that by tearing open the alcohol pad, and I like to pinch the alcohol pad against the vial and just give it a twist with my other hand, just like that. It's nice and clean. Then I am going to take my syringe package and I want you to look closely. This is the connector end over here. And I'm going to push the connector end through the back of the package, through the paper. And I'm gonna peel that like a banana and then I'm going to hold on to this in my hand and while I've got that firmly grasped in my hand I'm going to do exactly the same thing with the needle so I'm going to take the connector end the end with the colorful piece of plastic there and I'm going to push it through the back of the paper just like that and then I'm going to attach those together by screwing them in Fantastic. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen the cap on my syringe, on the needle, and the tip of the needle is over here. So I want both of my hands behind the tip of the needle, and I do this to make sure that I don't hurt myself. If I open the syringe like this, as soon as the resistance gives, I'm going to have a reflex and potentially injure myself. So I'm not going to do it like that. Instead, I'm going to pinch the plastic cap between the bend in my index finger and my thumb. I'm going to use my other hand to support it, and I'm just going to click it free. And once it's loose, then I'm going to tip it off down onto the mat. I now need to pull back on the plunger in order to fill the syringe with an amount of air equivalent to whatever my dose is um, that I'm hoping to pull out of the syringe. So in this case, I'll hold my hand behind it. You can see here, and I hope again that that's clear. Um, I'm going to be withdrawing 0.3 moles of estradiol valerate today. And in order to do that, I just want to make sure that I have filled the syringe with 0.3 moles of air. Once I've got that done, I will hold the syringe like a pencil, and I'll push the needle through the rubber stopper that I've cleaned. I'm going to inject the air into the bottle, and then I'm going to hold 
the syringe and the needle upside down. And let me just adjust the camera so that we can see that a little bit more easily. I'm going to use this little window in between the two edges of the label. And I'm going to look through there just to make sure that the tip of my needle is in the medication and not in the air at the top of the bottle. So I have to slide it back a little bit and then I'm going to withdraw. And I use my left hand to stabilize the needle in the bottle while my right hand operates the plunger. And as you can see there, the medication is slowly withdrawing. It's quite thick and quite viscous. The estradiol valerate is a little bit thicker than the depot testosterone, so the testosterone goes a little bit quicker. But I just maintain that suction, and I try to make sure that the needle isn't slipping while I do this into the air. And as you can see, I've pulled the plunger back further than I need to. That's just because I want to generate additional suction. And any excess, I'm going to push back into the syringe. As you can see, there was a little bit of air at the top there, and it rises to the top so that I can push it back in. And I will push the plunger until I have my 0.3. <clears throat> With that done, I'll take the needle out of the bottle, and I will now recap the needle, which I do with one hand. So as you can see, my other hand is far, far away. I can't hurt myself. Sliding the needle into the cap, tipping it upwards, clicking it back on. From there, I'm going to detach this cap. And I'm then going to keep the syringe in my hand, as I did before. And I'm going to open the smaller needle, just the way that I've already shown you, pushing the connector end through the back of the packaging and screwing it on. And then I want to make sure that this small little needle is on nice and tight. And then I'm going to set it down. OK, now I need to prepare the injection site. Okay, so the subcutaneous injection is easiest to administer to yourself in a fold of skin on the abdomen. This is my tummy. I'm going to try not to be embarrassed about it. So as you can see, I rolled my top inwards. This prevents it from falling down while I'm busy injecting. And then I'm going to try and find a nice spot to do the injection today. So I'm going to feel around to make sure there's no lumps or bumps from previous injections. If there are, those do tend to clear up um, within a week or two. And I have a nice spot just over there. So I'm going to clean the spot that I intend to inject myself. And what I'm going to do is like this. With the next alcohol pad, I'm going to clean that area. And I'm going to go outwards in a circle of increasing diameter so that I have not only killed any bacteria that might be on the skin surface with alcohol, but I have also pushed them aside. Now, while that dries, I'm going to take my syringe, and again, just like we did before, I'm going to loosen the cap, and I'm going to tip it off, and then I want you to look nice and closely at the tip of the needle here, and I hope you can see it against the background of my top. Um, but the needle itself is slanted, so there's a taper to the needle, and or rather a bevel to the needle. And what I want, let me see if I can make it a little clearer. Yeah. Okay, so if you take a nice good look at that needle, you will see the bevel that I'm talking about. In fact, I'm going to bring the camera just a little bit closer so that becomes a little more obvious. And let's just see if we can get it into focus. There you go. OK, so you can see that there's a bevel to the needle. And when I inject myself, I want the sharp edge, this is the edge that you see on the left side of the picture now, to be the first part that comes into contact with my skin. And sorry, I'm just trying to get it back into focus again. There you have it. 
All right, so the sharp end is going to be the one that's going to point down. Now, before I inject myself, I'm just going to make sure to push gently on the plunger. And I will do that until I have a tiny drop of medication at the tip of the needle. And I'm sure that you can see it there. Let's see if it'll focus here. Perhaps we should try on the, the other camera. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to hold my syringe like a pencil. I'll zoom out again so that you can see this nicely, like a pencil in my right hand. I'm right-handed and I'm holding it with the bevel pointing down, the sharp end pointing down. With my left hand, I'm going to take that fold again and then I'm going to inject through the skin at 45 degrees. This would be 90 degrees, directly perpendicular to the surface of the skin. This would be zero degrees. I want to go in the middle, 45 degrees. The easiest way for me to do this is to take a deep breath all the way in, and then as I breathe out, I'm going to inject myself. Sorry, let me just adjust the camera. So there I am through the skin in one swift and stable motion. I release my left hand and I put the edge of my hand against my abdomen and I use my fingers to support the syringe like that. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to pull back on the plunger and while I do this I look for blood. If there is blood we'll see it in the cap of the needle there or in the hub of the needle and that means that I'm in a blood vessel and I shouldn't inject. There is no blood so I'm clear to inject. Stabilize my syringe with my non-dominant hand and with my right hand I'm going to gently push the plunger and my goal here is not to force the, the fluid through the syringe any faster than it wants to go but just to hold that pressure and let it go at its own pace and as you can see if my hand gets tired then I just release it and I take my grip again and I can adjust my grip if I need to. I'm going to try and give you a window here so that you can see the plunger moving as I inject. And all through the process I'm just going to be patient and breathe in and out and it'll be done before I know it. almost to the end now. And I will feel a change in resistance when the plunger gets to the end. And I'll also be able to see the plunger sort of bounce against the end of the needle. So there I am at the end. I'll release my right hand, hold this again like a pencil, I'll grab my costume wall, and out I go. I don't need to rub this, I don't need to press it really hard, I'm just going to hold it against my skin. And I'm going to recap my other needles safely, as I've shown you how to do. And after a few seconds, I can take the cotton wool away. And that's that. So there you have it. Quick, easy, simple, and just about as close to painless as any injection will ever be. That is your subcutaneous hormone injection technique. I hope you found this video helpful. I hope it gives you a little bit of confidence and understanding of the technique to use when injecting yourself with hormones so that you can also do it effortlessly and painlessly. Thanks for watching.